From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. Republicans in the Montana House endorsed a bill today that will dramatically increase a state tax credit to fund scholarships for children attending private schools in Montana. The House voted 64 to 36 to advance that bill which increases the maximum allowable tax credit from $150 per donor to $200,000. A fiscal note estimated that the tax credit will cost the state treasury about $10 million over the next two years and nearly $15 million for the two years after that. All 64 votes in favor of that bill were from Republicans. Opponents of the bill said money from the scholarship organizations goes primarily to religious schools, many which denigrate other religions or their followers. But supporters said the expanded program would simply help families of modest means choose schools that best fit their children and give public schools some competition. I think it's time that we rise to the challenge of getting better as a public school, and with our associated private schools, because we're all trying to do the same thing. I'm going to support this bill because it's good for public education to have some competition. That bill now goes to the House Appropriations Committee where lawmakers will see if it fits into the overall state budget. However, supporters said that Republican Governor Greg Gianforte had set aside $3 million a year in his budget to support it. Well, students in Billings first started attending McKinley Elementary School way back in 1907, and now it's on the National Register of Historic Places. Crews completed construction in the original building in 1906 and on the North Edition in 1917. Academic Renaissance and Italian Renaissance Revival are part of the description in the registration. The school property at 820 North 31st Street takes up the whole block, is next to a neighborhood that is also a historic place. What I love about this building, you know, as a, as a historian, is it represents, along with uh, what was called the West Side School, or Broadwater School, is the growth of Billings. They're building beautiful buildings, which says something about a city's confidence as it moves forward, right? This has a lot to do with the whole development of kind of the growth of the West End. That, that's one of the arguments we made. The annex, constructed in 1958, was demolished to make room for another edition in 2014. That latest edition is not part of the National Register of Historic Places. Well, Montana Senator Steve Daines and Wyoming Senator John Barrasso were part of a group of 18 Republican senators traveling to the southern border today. They're accusing the Biden administration of creating incentives for the increasing numbers of migrants, including unaccompanied children coming into America. Last night, the senators were escorted by Border Patrol and Texas Department of Public Safety agents at a busy crossing point. Senator Dane says Border Patrol agents told them that meth, fentanyl and heroin are coming into the country and that cartel members are making big money bringing people into the U.S. The senator held a news conference on the phone this afternoon to talk about his experience. So they usher them across in rafts and, uh, uh, and it's a very, very lucrative uh, business. So we, we, we saw that uh, firsthand last night. The other thing that struck me last night, they showed us signs that have been put up uh, that direct the uh, illegal immigrants uh, where to go once they cross the U.S. border so they can be apprehended and begin to be processed. And we visited one of these uh, makeshift centers literally underneath a freeway or a highway bridge where we saw mothers and children uh, in pens. They are so overwhelmed with the number of people coming across the border, they, they can't handle them all. Now, President Biden said yesterday the winter months normally see a seasonal growth in migrants making the journey to the United States. The president said he's proudly reversing some Trump era policies, including forced family separations. And once again, the Montana legislature is considering a range of bills affecting the state's energy future, both for developers and electric consumers. And once again, the focus of many of those bills sponsored by Republicans is to bolster the aging coal-fired power plants at Coal Strip. Tonight, MTN's Mike Dennison takes a closer look at this effort and what it could mean for consumers and our energy economy. Most of the energy bills sponsored by Republican State Senator Steve Fitzpatrick of Great Falls have one aim, 
to help the state's largest utility, Northwestern Energy, acquire more power from the two remaining coal strip power plants in southeast Montana. With all this stuff that's uh, going around out in Washington and Oregon, I, you know, I just am worried that uh, you know, they're eventually going to be able to shut down that plant and destroy that asset. He's talking about out-of-state electric utilities that own about two-thirds of Coal Strip 3 and 4 and who want to abandon coal power by the end of this decade. Among other things, his bills would give the state attorney general power to accuse these owners of deceptive practices and ask for fines if they take action that could lead to early closure of Coal Strip. But the most significant of his bills is Senate Bill 379. It guarantees a specific return for Northwestern from its Montana customers if the utility buys a bigger share of coal strip power, which it wants to do. Former State Public Service Commissioner Tom Schneider says there's a reason why Northwestern wants to keep coal strip running for as long as possible. Because they've got this windfall existing uh, rate treatment of that plant. They do not want that plant to go down any time, any way, because they've got a cash cow. Schneider and other critics of the bill also say that renewable power like wind or solar is now generally cheaper than coal-fired power and should be the emphasis in future power development. But Republican lawmakers this session also are advancing bills that de-emphasize renewables or, in some cases, undercut their development. Their argument, and Northwestern's, is that Montana has enough renewables already and needs more of a steadier, reliable power source like coal. David Schlissel of the Institute on Energy Economics and Financial Analysis says that's no longer a legitimate argument against renewables. That argument wasn't true 15 years ago and certainly isn't true today. The transition's happening. It's no longer the future. It's the present. When asked if additional coal strip power for Montana would be relatively cheaper, Northwestern spokesman David Hoffman says it would be competitive, but couldn't say precisely what the price would be compared to renewables. However, Hoffman says he thinks a majority of lawmakers believe it's better for Montana to put more of coal strip into Montana hands and keep the plants operating well into the future. There's, a, I think, a recognition by legislators that there's a value to coal strip into the future. Nobody perhaps can agree upon what that future date is, but we firmly believe it's beyond the Washington state and West Coast owners, regulators and politicians who say it's 2025. The question now is, will these bills actually pass and become law, charting a more coal-fired course of energy consumption in Montana? We'll find out in the next few weeks. In Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Well, the hearing for Senator Fitzpatrick, Senate Bill 379 has been scheduled for next Tuesday before the Senate Energy Committee. Turning to Chief Meteorologist Ed McIntosh. Ed, it uh, seems like we've been missing something this month. Snow, perhaps? Yeah, that's for sure, especially around the Billings area. Certainly you've seen it in the mountains and foothills. Now, average for this time of the year, Billings would have seen 43 inches of snow. We're actually sitting at 48 thanks to a strong start in October. Then things really tapered off November, December, January, and then February, another 17 inches of snow. But so far for the month of March, only a trace at the airport. Right now, that makes us the least snowiest March on record. 2010, we only had three tenths. We had a bunch that we had less than two inches of snow. On average, based on the 30 year average, 10 inches of snow is what we would typically see. The highest amount was over two feet in 1935. Take a closer look at the forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Thanks, Ed. Well, despite a recent move by Billings Clinic to drop its support for a proposed medical school in Billings, St. Vincent Healthcare says it is sticking with the school and cites the growing demand for skilled providers. On Wednesday, Billings Clinic announced it was stepping out of the project after Rocky Vista School executives allegedly made negative remarks about a Jewish affiliation for another medical school and toward a female leader at Billings Clinic. Well, in a statement today, St. Vincent President Steve Loveless says the hospital takes the allegations against Rocky Vista seriously, but it appreciates the swift actions by RVU leadership and is encouraged believing that the actions of a few are not representative of the RVU organization. Loveless goes on to say the need for medical professionals is real and he looks forward to meeting with the RVU team in the coming days as the hospital continues its discernment. And tonight, the Yellowstone County Commissioners weighed in, saying they will continue to hold Rocky Vista University and their team to high standards, but remain excited and continue to support the project. 
Well, still to come on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2 Beyond the Books, it's beginning to look a little more normal at the Billings Public Library. We'll update you on the changes coming up next. And then later in sports from Melbourne to Miles City, a worldwide pipeline as Miles Community College is one of the top basketball programs in the nation right now. We'll head there in just a bit.